What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Rating Climb. Average Joe is 1141. So if you're rated 11 or 1200, this is going to be the video for you. We are going to talk through the thought process behind each of the moves. I have a list of openings that you guys have recommended. Let me just develop and attack the pawn. I think I might try to go for a Halloween Gambit here. Never mind. So we cannot play the Halloween Gambit against that. Uh, probably just develop a bishop, attack the weak spot. By the way, if you are 11... Or 1200 my new course breaking 1500 well it's it was it was opened like a while ago then it closed now it's reopening so there's a link in the description that's the best way to improve quickly there's been some amazing stories from students in there like the progress has been insane so h6 the problem with h6 i've said it before and i'll say it again is <clears throat> you don't develop a piece and you don't fight for the center so the way that you take advantage of moves like this is by just Busting open the center, right? I already have two pieces ready to attack my opponent. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and they have no pieces. So that's that's what you do. Yeah, and again, same thing, right? This is how you punish these moves. You, you open things up. So we're going to take this pawn. And I already see a tactic. I already see a tactic if they take me back. So this is not a great strategy from, from our opponent here. A little bit surprised. I thought, you know... 1200 rated player, knight c6. Okay, so they at least avoid the tactic. My tactic was going to be sacrifice the bishop to lure the king away, and then the queen was going to jump in. So they do deal with that. Um, there's a couple of ways we could play this. Number one, we could just take and be happy with an extra pawn. Nothing wrong with that. I'm considering pushing here, and the idea is that if they take this way, it really creates weaknesses along this diagonal. And if they take with the bishop, I can force them to take that way. And again create the weaknesses here. The other way to play this, I guess, would be to let them take me back and just keep developing. I don't think I'm going to do that. I think it's a question of taking or pushing here. So how big of a deal is this diagonal? Pretty big deal. So I kind of want to do that. But I'm also just greedy and I do like free pawns. Now let's go this way. Let, let's see if we can showcase the weaknesses here that this h6 move has created. Okay, because when you push h6, you don't control g6. And now we're going to undermine this pawn and this g6 square is going to be, really for the rest of the game, a potential target that the Black King has to watch out for. Oh my. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, the, the problem is you still have the weakness and you can't develop your, your knight. And you don't even get a pawn. Now I now have an anno annoying pawn in your face too. So that's not a great solution for, for Black's problems. So question for you guys watching at home. How do we take advantage of this weak diagonal? What's the best move here? <laughs> well, <clears throat> I think we could play knight g5. No, we can't play knight g5 because they take this way. But I think we could play maybe knight d4 or knight h4. Basically, what I want to do is move the knight and allow the queen to come here. Now, if I go knight to d4, this is interesting because black might be tempted to take me. And then check this out. Check. If the king moves up, that's checkmate. If the pawn blocks, that's also checkmate. So basically, my knight is invincible. And this is going to lead to a checkmate. Now, they could stop me with like knight to e5. Knight to e5 is really the best move for black. So where would I want my knight? Would I rather my knight be on h4 or d4? If knight e5, the queen comes with check, there's this move g6, which is kind of like black's only saving move if the knight defends. So in that particular scenario, I would want my knight to be on h4. The other thing, though, that I'm thinking about is if I go knight d4, knight e5, what if I just play f4, chase the knight away? And if the knight takes me over here, guess what? We're back to our checkmate. So that seems pretty good. Where would the knight move to? You can't go there. You can't go there. You can't take. You can't go there. You'd have to go to g6, only move. Then I would go queen h5 and pin it. The only way to defend would be the knight. Then I could push f5. I'm winning a piece for free. That looks really, really good. So <clears throat> the only question is, is knight h4 immediately better than that? But wow, yeah, knight h4 is actually really good too. Okay, I already calculated it. I like the way that it looks. I'm going to go with knight to d4. But I think knight h4 is also a really good move as well. So, oh, and they fell for it. That simple. They fell for the trap. And the game is over. Follow through with the plan. 
check and you can see this is why you don't you can't play moves like this and create these weaknesses it's just it's just not worth it right you get a little bit of benefit you stop the knight from coming into g5 and the bishop coming into g5 that's not enough benefit to you know get yourself checkmated okay they try to block we take it obviously and then there's checkmate next move so it's wild to me can i just say this it is wild to me the level of of difference that we see i mean we've seen some incredibly strong 900 thousand rated players and then we see you know no offense to this person who's almost 1200 but they made some terrible choices this game right and it's i don't know it's just wild like the, the variety of skill levels that are still the same rating it's kind of mind-boggling actually and my win counter might be way off here yeah they had a 47 accuracy i mean i i don't know what's going on there what was my mistake oh e6 e6 was the mistake i guess the computer probably wanted me to take the free pawn no computer wanted me to actually just develop interesting just bring out the piece and then wait what this tactic oh so i was thinking it didn't work anymore because the knight defends the queen but stockfish says no 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 now you jump in with this knight they can't take you because they need the knight to defend the queen and if they try to move their king somewhere guess what this problem is back if you go here the other knight comes in if you go here now you take the queen and follow up with knight g6 with a fork wow wow interesting all right let's jump to the next game i don't want to get too sidetracked here okay <clears throat> d4 i'm gonna play knight f6 because there's an opening on my list here the budapest gambit no we need we need somebody to play d4 c4 we're just not gonna see it if they can't if they don't play these two moves okay so what are we gonna do against this well probably i'm gonna get a pawn in the center then we have to deal with maybe the london setup so one thing that you can do if you're worried about the london which i'll play in this game just to mix it up a little bit is you can go for like a king's indian setup and the nice thing about the king's indian setup is the pawns on the dark squares really limit that bishop here okay and then that's what we do see so g6 you can fee and keto this guy over here and you get a, a position that i think a lot of london players are maybe unfamiliar with okay so this is a good strategy especially at this rating range i i think this could work very well so once we get our basic setup where we castle we fee and keto the bishop usually you're going to look to strike at the center with one of these two moves so we kind of want to prepare that a little bit so for example knight to d7 to get ready to go here or knight to c6 both kind of have the same idea in mind knight to c6 is a little bit more aggressive but you also have to watch out for like pawn pushes and things like that knight to d7 also gives you the option you could really go either way uh, so knight c6 means we are committing to this so what i'm going to do actually instead is i'll play rookie eight first to help support that and then i'll make the decision on where do i want my knight to go yeah, okay, so this is pretty typical London setup. Let's just go knight c6. I think this is fine. So now we have one, two, three defenders. We're getting ready to strike with e5, and there's only three attackers. So three attackers, three defenders. We are good to go and play e5. Takes, 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 takes. Okay, so he's trying to eliminate one to stop me from doing that, right? Now, the question is... If I go there and he takes, do I have any tactics? Like taking here, it looks like I lose a rook. I take back, probably not worth it. And of course, if I just trade, well, then I only have two defenders. I am going to lose the pawn, it looks like. So probably can't get away with e5 right now. But what I could do is maybe go knight h5 and hunt down the bishop if I want. An idea. Um, you can also just go bishop d7 and get ready to recapture this guy. Yeah, I don't actually mind the look of that. Let's go bishop d7. We'll just develop and get ready to recapture. I think what I'm going to do next is chase this bishop away. And if he takes me, I'm happy because now I have the bishop pair and this bishop's very powerful. If he goes back, then I might go back to my original plan of e5. For example, here, yeah. Now I can play b5, get rid of that bishop, 
And guess what? Now e5 is back on the table. Okay, now we have to be careful. There is an attack here. So I want to make sure, let's just say e5. Do I have to worry about a knight jumping in here? Mm, probably not a big deal. I think I could just maybe slide my rook somewhere to defend and we would be okay. I could play h6 if I'm worried about that. Which, uh, let's see. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I will just play h6. I mean, I don't have to rush. This e5 move is not really going anywhere. I don't see how white's going to stop me. So I'll take time to gain control of the, the square. Now, I want to point something out. The previous game that we played, my opponent was playing moves like this, h6 and a6. What is the major difference between what they did and what I'm doing? All my pieces are developed, and now I'm playing these moves to gain control over critical squares after I've developed and castled. My opponent had the order backwards. They played those moves first. You can't do that, right? So yeah, I think now we can go with, with e5 um, and strike at the center, okay? And usually I'm going to take with the pawn here. You could consider taking with the knight and trying to open up the bishop like this, but I'm going to go with the pawn, and the idea is like, Maybe we're going to push f5 later, like move my king, push f5, and we're going to try to use these pawns to kind of, you know, do something. Like gain space, attack white's pieces, something like that. They tuck the bishop back. Um, let me see. What do we want to do? So this bishop is a little bit annoying. I kind of would like to trade that. But I don't want to lose a pawn here, so I have to make sure I do this carefully. Bishop e6, if the knight takes... I takes, the bishop takes, I take, it hits the queen. They could take and hit my queen. If I grab a queen, they grab a queen. I grab a bishop, they grab. Looks like I actually do lose a pawn in that situation. So maybe I don't want to do that just yet. So what's a different plan? Um, a different plan could be queen e7 and then bring my rook into the game. I think that makes a lot of sense. This is the only open file on the board. So putting a rook there, uh, sorry, putting a rook there seems to be a good idea. Let's go rook to d8. Line up on the queen. Of course, they're probably going to move the queen somewhere. But we still have the rook fighting for control of the file. <laughs> now, I want to ask you guys a, a bit of an advanced question here, but... When you look at this position, do you see any weaknesses in white's position? Well, I see one potentially on d3. So I'm considering the move bishop f5 to try to sneak my bishop in or maybe even my rook in or something and double up, something like that. The only concern I have is what happens on e4? Do I just end up wasting a move? I think I maybe I do. So... Do I care about that? Then we could go back. Again, we have this issue of what happens if they take my pawn. I take, they take, I take, they take, I take, they take. I'm just losing a pawn. I don't want to lose a pawn. So I got to find a different move. So, <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, I'm not exactly sure what to do, to be totally honest with you. I'm, I'm wondering if I can poke this pawn forward. The problem is... The d4 square opens up. But then we might actually be able to swing the knight over, hit the bishop, follow it up by c5, get the pawns rolling. That looks pretty good. I'm not worried about this capture because I would get two pieces for the rook, which is a great trade. The knight doesn't really have anywhere else to go except to d4. So knight a5 followed by c5 looks, looks like a pretty good plan, actually. Now, the oh, wait, wait a second, wait a second. e4, knight d4, knight e5. What about bishop takes c7? Right? I have to think about that. I do have to think about that. Yeah, I don't want to do that. That's a fork and looks like a good move for, for black. Wow. I mean, for white. All right. What if I do this and then jump my knight to e5 instead? Still threatening c5, but then we block off the bishop. That seems much more reasonable. Okay. So let's go e4. And this is kind of a critical moment, so it's worth spending some time. Of course, I'm talking, so it takes a lot longer, but using the time in these critical situations 
is very important. I'm just scanning for tactics, making sure that, you know, there's no forks or pins or anything that I'm missing. I don't see it. All my pieces seem to be pretty well defended, you know, which is important. Usually when that's the case, there are very little tactics available. Uh, so yeah, I think we're fine and we're getting ready to really gain some space. If we can get C5, C4 in and then maybe plant the knight on D3, it's, it's going to be bad news for white. Okay. So this is the plan. <coughs> and remember the top priority in these games is always not making blunders and not making mistakes. These other plans are secondary. Okay. That looks like a blunder. That's what I'm talking about. This has to be the top priority for you can't. You can't blunder pieces like that and expect to win to win very many games. So I don't see any tricks. It just looks like they didn't see my knight. So I will simply take the free piece. Okay, they decided to trade now, and we do have two options here. Don't know that it matters too much. I think they're both probably fine. I'm leaning towards maybe the bishop just to kind of keep the queen defending stuff, but maybe getting the queen there also makes sense. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'll take with the bishop. Okay, queen f3, so it's attacking my knight, it's attacking here, but that's already defended. Not a big deal. Do you guys see any tactics? <clears throat> Always be looking for tactics. <clears throat> All right, hopefully you spotted the fork. There's actually a triple fork here. And because this is already defended, I don't have to worry about that. And so I'm going to, let me just scan, 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 scan. No tricks, no tactics. Let's go for the fork. I'm not really interested in the bishop. I'm more interested in the rook, most likely. Hmm. Okay, he does retreat. We'll go ahead and grab the rook. And normally I'm not going to trade this bishop for this knight, but because I'm a head material, I am considering it. But since they just recapture, then maybe I have some dark squared weaknesses. I don't need to mess around with that. Let me continue with my plan that I was doing before. C5 to kick that knight away. Notice the bishop is controlling all these squares so the knight can't really move forward. And if it goes back here, I'm going to put my bishop on F6. Same idea. Right here, my bishop was controlling the knight. And again, my bishop, the other bishop this time, is controlling the knight. So uh, the, the knight's very limited in where it can go, okay? And we're just kind of slowly taking over the board here. It does help that we have an extra rook at this point, right? Because we got the free piece, and then we traded that piece for the rook. But yeah, white is, is in big trouble. So sometimes what I like to do when I have my pawns like this is just slide my king up. And notice my king just adds support to everything. It's actually a really good way to use your king to help defend stuff. There's not going to be any potential sacrifices in the future because even if I have to recapture, it's already going to be defended. Uh, this is defended. Sorry, this is defended. This is defended. It's just a nice place for my king. I'm off the back rank. A lot of good things about that. Let me go C4. Shut down the pawns. Whenever I see a situation like this, I like to push my pawn forward because it, it locks those pawns in. Oh, yeah, I did actually forget that the knight could jump back. So maybe I rushed that just a bit, but it's fine. In an effort to speed up and not lose on time, I will go ahead and trade. Important consideration, white does not have a dark squared bishop. So I'm not super concerned about the dark squares. That's why I'm, you know, okay doing that. All right. Um, what I'm going to do is go here. And I'm going to try to play bishop f5 and trade the bishops. <coughs> And if they don't want to trade, then I'll jump into d3. If they push, then these pawns are going to be weak. Probably just grab the pawns, things like that. So I think I was going to say f3 might be a good move for, for white. But no, f4, I don't think that's good. I'm going to go with this. Of course, e4 doesn't work because we have a tactic. Always be looking for those tactics. Check, grab the pawn. 
And so my plan is simple. Trade the pieces. I'm up the rook. Just get to the end game as quickly as possible. I'm going to come in and try to trade some more. Uh, there is a tactic lurking in the position. Remember the pins, but really I don't care that much about that. I want to trade. Okay. So how do we offer a trade? Queen e4. Also, don't let your opponent's queens invade your position if you don't have to. There's no reason to do that. Okay, force the trade. Makes my life easy. And when you're low on time, it's a lot easier to pre-move and really save the time in a situation like this, right? Very, very easy to move quickly. I don't have to think a lot because there's not many pieces that can threaten me except one rook, right? And so, and that, now that's gone, it's even easier. We take this, push the pawn, and we win. All right, let's bring the king up and checkmate. I'm going to just go here and then bring my rook over and checkmate. <clears throat> uh, you could also use your rook to take the pawns. Get a queen, that would work too, but I see a simple path to checkmate, so I'll just go ahead and do that. They do resign. <coughs> Good game to our opponent. Let's check the game review. <coughs> I apologize about my <coughs> throat. A bit scratchy. So, yeah, um, you see it was relatively equal until that mistake, which I'm sure was when they blundered the piece, and then we just took it from there. Yep, that's exactly right. So if they didn't do that, they had a decent position. Um, that's why I say like 11, 1200, there's usually going to be one or two significant mistakes each game. And if you can take advantage of that and then just not blunder the piece right back to your opponent, right? You're going to probably win. Okay, let's go to the next game. Okay, what's on my list here, guys? Evans Gambit, Halloween Gambit are some of the ones I'm really trying to play. So I'll stick with E4 for right now. We do have, oh, C6. Okay, so we're going to see a Karo Khan. Uh, I guess I'll go with my, I don't think I have any particular openings being requested here against this. Yeah, so I'll just play my normal gambit that I play all the time against the Karo Khan. It's a lot of fun. But when they take us, we're going to bring our bishop to C4. And <clears throat> this is not a move that's played very often. But we're attacking the weak f7 pawn. And then we're going to follow that up by gambiting another pawn here. Or not another pawn, by gambiting a pawn uh, to open up the f file. And you pair that open f file with the bishop on c4. There's all kinds of tactical opportunities and ideas that pop up. Okay? So pretty much everyone is going to take this pawn. I don't know, yeah, I don't know what they were thinking about, but most everybody takes the pawn. So bishop c4 lines up here, and there's two ways they can play it. They can play super passive, where they keep their bishop locked in and just block you off right away. But what most people do, yeah, is develop the bishop at some point, either here or here. And usually the knight comes and the bishop goes to one of these. So yeah, um, I, let's just stick with the plan. So we're going to play f3, and... I think we will actually take with the knight, but we could consider the queen also. No, but I think, generally speaking, the knight's going to be the way to go, because you want to castle quickly. Yeah, I think we're going to go with the knight. The queen is nice because, okay, it attacks, and you, you have some threats, but you also have to be careful because then black can potentially jump in. Okay, this is a blunder. Do you guys see why it's a blunder? Well, we have two ways to to do this, <clears throat> we could go for the fancy queen sacrifice checkmate, which I think I will, but we could also sacrifice the bishop first, and then jump in with the fork, okay, but I'm going to go with this one, because it looks really nice, okay, we're going to give up the queen, and go for the checkmate on f7, now, they don't have to take, okay, well, they do take, <laughs> if they go back here, we would have just taken it with the queen, and if they would have went here, we would have just taken it, follow that up with queen h5, and black is going to be in big trouble. But this way, we just take for the checkmate. And that's why I like that opening. It's very, very tricky. You can get some quick wins. There's lots of tactics like that that pop up. Bishop g4 in the 
Karo Khan, it's a very common move, right? And so a lot of people will do that. Here's the game review. But when they do it, they fall into the trap. And actually, even strong players, uh, like t above 2200, have fallen for that same exact trap. So very, very tricky line. Okay, so yeah, there we go. Let's jump to the next game. I don't think we need to review anything there. Okay, we're going to go with E4 again. And... <laughs> Well, I mean, let's let's just see what happens if we play it again. Let's just see what happens. We'll play it two times in a row. We'll see if uh, if Black does anything different this game. It's it's interesting to me that uh, wow e five. Now that's a move I wasn't expecting. Okay. It doesn't look like a terrible move. I mean, yes, it's an undefended pawn, but what you have to understand is black is clearing the way for their pieces, which is, is a good thing. It's some sort of a weird gambit, maybe, you could say. So the question is, what am I going to do about this? I think if I take, I'm just concerned with the pawn pushing forward. It looks a bit annoying. Maybe it's not a big deal. Maybe I can actually go bishop c4 with the tactics. Aha, uh -huh. I do think I have a nice move there. Okay, so I will take this way. I was thinking about trading here first, but no, I think I'll do it like this. So on d4, I'm going to go bishop c4, guys. And the idea is if they take my knight, I sacrifice my bishop and I get the queen. And if they move the king, then I'll go bishop g5 and I got, I'll get the queen most likely that way. Bishop b4, okay, so they are going to just try to attack me like this. All right. Well, I don't want this to push. My knight is pinned. So if a pawn pushes on a pinned piece, that's not a good sign. I think I'm going to just capture here. Now, I would still have the same issue, basically, after that. But the other thing that I could do would be to play bishop d2 right away. No, I'm going to tra trade first. And the reason I'm going to trade first is because after bishop d2, now if the pawn pushes, I can jump my knight to e4. So I like having that square available to me. So I think that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Now, if they really want to, I was going to say they could trade here first, but they didn't do it. Okay, should we take the pawn? What do you guys think? Should we just take the free pawn? I hope you didn't say yes, because that's not a free pawn. They would take our queen, and guess what? We can't recapture. Okay, so you got to watch out. Very, very tricky position there. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is just go with bishop d2. Break the pin. And now we're free to move our knight. Don't have to worry about that. The pawn pushes. I probably will jump to e4. Now that I'm looking at it, though, actually b5 also looks appealing because d6, e4. We'll see what black's going to do first. But top priority, I think, is to get, it, get it out of the pin. I don't have any problems with the pawn pushing on me. I want to get my knight out, get this bishop out in castle, uh, but first deal with the threats from my opponent. So we'll see what they're going to do. Okay, so they do push. So obviously we have to move the knight, and it is a question of where to, because at first I was thinking here, because it's a nice centralized square, but b5 attacks the pawn, and if the bishop gets traded, which looks like it could be very likely, there's knight to d6. Now I could still go to d6 from e4, so it's a the big question is, do I want that to attack the pawn or not? The other thing is, like, it could get chased away here. Harder for it to get chased away from... I say that, though, but e4, that the queen might jump to d5. And if I had my knight on b5, I could actually fork it. So, okay, I am going to go b5. I'm not actually sure. Both of these moves, I think were decent options, but we'll go with b5. Looks like it has more threats attached to it than on e4. Okay, which way should I take? Obviously, we'll take with the queen. I don't want to lose castling rights. <coughs> now I'm actually ready to castle queenside. 
which would line up on the pawn here. Okay, so yeah, this is what I was talking about. This d6 square, right, is is a great hole because it can't be attacked by pawns. But also, and the big bonus here is that I force the king to move. It means black can't castle. That's the number one priority with, with this move. So they're going to go king f8, and then we can basically just develop and keep, keep going uh, with the threats. There is an attack here. I wonder if I have to be concerned about that. So let's say king f8. I mean, of course I could threaten like checkmate, but if black has an easy way to deal with that with like bishop e6, I don't know how good that's going to be. I could go bishop c4 to attack that way, but then the knight's going to grab my pawn. Yeah, I don't really want to lose that pawn, so I'm considering f4. Only because, here, here, normally I wouldn't do this. Normally I'd play like knight f3, but I'm afraid that knight f3 might lead to a tactic. Takes, 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 and I lose a pawn. But on f4, I just recapture with my pawn. That doesn't exist. I'm not concerned about this. Yeah, I think we should go f4. Now there is f6. Then again, we go there. Yeah, that's going to be a better version. Okay, so let's play f4. <clears throat> this is just a very powerful knight. So I really want to make sure I take care of the pawn that's defending the knight. And I think this is the way to do it. And then we can go knight f3 or castles, bishop c4, things like that. <clears throat> and now I think if black wants to get rid of this pawn, they're going to have to play f6. But the problem with f6, knight f3, takes, takes, is now the f file is open and your king is really in trouble in that situation. So. 97, okay. I think we castle or play knight f3. Maybe bishop c4 to attack here is also really good. Actually, yeah, bishop c4. I think black would play bishop e6. Then I could take... There's also a pawn over here, but I'm not really interested in that pawn. I don't think I care about that. Uh, do I want to go there, or do I want to just play knight here? Let's get the knight out first. I, I don't know. This knight can jump to g5. It can take on d4. I think this is actually better. Knight f5. Okay. So, obviously, he's attacking my knight. We could trade for the bishop. We could trade for the knight. We could not trade and just move. Um, yeah, I think <clears throat> I, what I don't want to let happen is this knight to jump to here. But I think I will actually just take it because that knight jumping into e, e3 would be very dangerous. So <clears throat> bishop d3 seems good. Because remember, I'm a head material. So if we do trade and go into an endgame, I'm pretty happy with that. Let me go bishop d3. And now I can castle either way. I'm not sure yet. This way, I don't like that there's an open c file or half open c file. This way looks safer. So I think I'm leaning towards castling here. And black still has the problem that the rook is stuck, right? And so I think, yeah, I think we just maybe trade these guys off. Castle kingside. Bring the rook over and try to attack. That seems like a very good plan. It's going to be hard for black to deal with that. And of course, all the while as I'm doing this, I'm trying to like not let my opponent do that what they were trying to do. For example, like that's why I traded my knight here. I didn't want that knight to jump in and start causing me all kinds of problems, right? Bishop g6 seems weird. I wonder if I could trap the bishop. But g4 is not defended. So I could try to play h3, but that seems like a waste of time. I don't think I want to do that right now. I think I just continue with castling at the moment and get the other rook involved, and then we just push, bust open the king. That's a simple and easy thing to do. Uh, 
I think trapping the bishop might just be might just be a distraction that's disguised as an opportunity here. Okay, queen comes up. Fine. Uh, let's see. I think we just keep bringing the pieces to where we want them to be. Let's bring the other rook over. So we are in position now to really start to push the issue. And now I might even play f5 because if they take me, yes, I lose a pawn. I'm actually happy to lose that pawn because it opens up my rook. We jump in with knight g5 and the game is basically over. So f5, e6 is extremely dangerous. You could argue maybe I could have played that even last turn, but I don't think I needed to rush. So this is probably fine too. Okay. And I took with the queen because I wanted to control these, these light squares. And again, the big problem that black has from earlier when we played knight to d6 is still causing them problems now. The rook is stuck. And how are they going to get that? They don't want to move their king like this, bring it out to the center. It's it's hard to get the, the rook involved. So if I push f5, is this a, that's defended, so we're not losing a pawn there. This is defended, so we're not losing a pawn there. Although this one, like I said, I would be okay losing. Uh, but now I'm ready to push forward. And the idea is... When you're attacking a king with the pawn storm, the primary objective usually is to trade the pawns away to open up the files for the rooks to attack the king. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be looking to do. And that's going to be kind of what I think about when I try to figure out which pawn should I move first. So let's see how black responds first, and then we'll make the decision. Because like, for example, if it was my turn, if I go here, Black can just push by, and then I don't get to open up the files most likely. So I would probably start with e6, because that's a fork. That's going to guarantee that I can make a trade that's going to open up some files. Usually you want to look for the forks, even if it's not like a fork on two pieces. Even a fork on two pawns is going to give you the option to take one of the pawns, right? So I think e6 is going to be the move, but let's see what black does. Okay, they, they actually... So now if I play e6, it's not a fork, right? Yes, it's a pass pawn, which is good, probably still enough to win the game, but is that the best? Or is it better to bust open the e-file? That's really what we have to decide. So let's just say I take, they could take me, probably won't because then I could get another pawn. So let's say takes, takes. Yeah, I, the only thing about that is even though it kind of opens up the king, it also opens up the G file and maybe the rook actually can get into the game. So this is a unique situation where I think I might actually push by and it has to do with the fact that this rook is stuck. I want to keep that rook stuck as long as possible and this I think gives me the best chance to do it. Also, a protected pass pawn like this is very, very good as well. So I know I just said the objective is usually to open up the files for the rooks. But you have to remember that there's always exceptions. And in this case, we're going with the exception of getting a pass pawn, which is protected. And that's more of an end game advantage. Okay, so now trading seems to make sense. That being said, I'm keeping an eye on things like this. Like I might still be able to attack the king. That's not out of the question yet. Okay, queen to d5. So tax my pawn. Let's just consider what happens if we go check. The king moves. Don't see a way to come in immediately. I wonder what happens if I sacrifice my knight and then push my pawn forward. Ooh. That looks dangerous, but maybe not needed. Do I care? This is defended. So what if I just like attack this pawn? If I just put like c3 just to take another pawn. Does that make sense? I think it does. I think it does. Notice this is pinned. So yeah, I'll just keep it simple. I'll just get another pawn here. And then I have that guy to start pushing down the board as well. So I would say our opponent is defended pretty well. It's hard when your rook is stuck like this though. And you're basically playing with three pieces against four pieces, right? That's what it comes down to, 95. All right, let's just start with option number one. We take the knight. Uh, they can't take with the queen, so they would have to take with a pawn, but then we could probably push f6 and really get to the king. I like that. 
Option number two, we take here, they take, I take, they take, we take, we go into an endgame. Also looks winning, but this one is just looks amazing. I can also grab this and trade, but I think I'm just gonna go go get the king. Yeah, we're just gonna go get the king. Even if we lose a pawn now. No notice guys how my strategy switches, right? It was I want to attack the king. And I was like, okay, no, I'll just take the pass pawn, protect the pass pawn. Now I'm switching back to, I want to attack the king and open up the files again. You want to be flexible when you play chess. You don't want to get so committed to one plan that you miss opportunities to change up your plan and, and get into a better position, right? And I think that's what's happening here. So queen takes, I think we go here and then just look for how do we break through on the king. There is F7, but... What's the point of f7 if the rook just moves? I think we just bust open the king. You know, as I'm looking at this, there is queen g6. If we try to checkmate, there's going to be a queen g6. Which is actually a very good defensive move. You know what? I may have misplayed this. I may have actually misplayed this. Because now that I'm looking at it, Black's King is not as... I really thought it was going to be in big trouble. And now that the Rook is... Yeah, the Rook is coming over, right? Which is not really what I wanted to let happen. I think I see a way to win another pawn. And it's still going to be a winning endgame because we're two pawns ahead. But I thought it would be more crushing than this, though. I, I really did. Basically, I'm just going to go into the end game now. I'm going to force the trade. I'm going to have extra pawns, and it is a winning end game, which is fine. A win is a win, but I'll be curious to see what Talkfish has to say about that. Actually, did I was that F6 move? You know, was that a good plan or not? That's what I want to see. What Stockfish says. So we'll just pre-move the recapture here so we don't lose on time. And what I'm going to do now is try to get my king up there. I could also just push this and let them trade. And then that's going to be a winning endgame too because I have two pawns against one. You know what? Maybe I'll do that just to demonstrate actually. How do you win that? Let's do that. I think it'll be instructive. So I'm going to give him this pawn. Normally I wouldn't. Normally I would go defend it. But I'm going to give him the pawn because I want to show you guys how this is a winning endgame. So what do you do? You have one extra pawn. How do we win this? The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my king is up and active. Okay. And then I'm going to start pushing where I have the extra pawn. So let's go here. And I want to make sure that I avoid situations where I let this pawn blockade me. Okay. So for example, in this position, if I would have played h4, h5 actually blockades me. I don't want to do that. That's why I started with g4. Now h4. And you want to make sure that you're able to get a pass pawn. Okay. <clears throat> so um, if he goes over, I'm going to go over and then get the pass pawn. Okay. And the other thing that's kind of important is you want your pawns to be a decently advanced usually. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and push these so that they're somewhat up the board. You don't want to have your opponent's pawns be like, you know, right here and yours are stuck here. I'll go ahead and push. And basically the winning plan is decoy. This is a decoy pawn, and then I come over here and I win these guys. That's it. I could even do it right now. Because as soon as he has to go away, it allows me to come in, and I get the two pawns and I win the game. Okay? Now, you do have to understand how to win these king and pawn positions, but it's not that difficult. We're going to get the opposition. We're going to... I guess we'll start pushing this guy. The only thing we have to watch out for is what? Stalemate, stalemate, right? So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go here, to make sure he has a place to move. And then I'm gonna push this pawn and get the queen. I don't care about this one anymore. Check, 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 whatever, and we, we win, okay? So you do have to be a little careful. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, you could lose that. I'm gonna cut him off. Since I only have 18 seconds, I wanna do this quickly. I'm gonna go check, I'm gonna bring my king up. Notice I'm not letting him out of this box. The box is just gonna get smaller and smaller. Let's go check. 
Let's keep going down. We do have to watch out for the stalemate, so let's be careful. Let me go check. Notice it's a check. I'm going to give him a place to move, and then I'm going to come in for the checkmate, okay? And you do have to, all these steps require accuracy because you could stalemate at any point along the way there, okay? All right, game review. Here we go. And that's 100 wins, unless I miscalculated, which is quite possible. Okay, so yeah, 87, looks like we played pretty well. Let me go actually to that moment in the game where I was curious about and see, what did Stockfish say? So right here, it did like E6, getting that protected past pawn, okay. It did like trading. And it didn't like f6. Yeah, because there was actually no follow-up. So the move that Stockfish wanted was queen g3. Hitting the pawn this way. And getting ready to play f6. Because now, for example, I think this is a much more dangerous move, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it is. Because now, you do get an attack on the king, which is what you want. The queen can come down, or rook f7. I guess there's... There's no checkmate, apparently, but it's a very, very powerful position. You can see that. Okay, so that's what Stockfish wanted. All right, good game. Let's jump to the next one. All right, we're black, playing against a 1200. And against E4, I will play... What's on my list? What is on my list? Let me, let me just play E5 for now. I wonder if we can, well, let me see what white's going to play. I wonder if we could try a fishing pole trap again. I haven't played a fishing pole trap in a while. And I think they still work very well. I think they would still work very well at the 1200 range. So let's see if we can do that. We've got our opponent thinking already. That's unusual. Move one. Oh, King's Gambit. Okay. So, the easiest and simplest way to play against the King's Gambit is what's called the Falkbeer Counter Gambit. You can play d5. And the idea is, first of all, they can't take your pawn here. Even though it looks like a free pawn, it's not. That's a trap. Okay, if they take your pawn, you basically win the game with Queen h4. Boom. If they block, your queen swings over, you have a fork, and you're happy. If the king moves up, well, then they're going to get checkmated. So they cannot take you here. If they take you here, you have kind of three. Oh, oh. All right. Well, I was going to say, uh, <laughs> they take you here. You have three options. You can play c6. You can play e4. You can also take here. They fell for the trap. So this, this is... When you play the King's Gambit, you have to always consider these moves and make sure you understand when they're dangerous and when they're not, right? Otherwise, the King's Gambit is a very dangerous opening to play. So yeah, they're in trouble because you don't, they either lose a rook or like I said, they're going to get checkmated. Okay, they're going to get checkmated. So how do we proceed to attack the king? Well, let's think about this. Option number one, bishop check. They're going to block with the knight. We grab the pawn, which is hitting the knight, which is pinned. That looks amazing. The other thing that looks amazing is queen takes e4 check, because if you look carefully, the king only has one place to go. Okay? And then we can follow up with bishop c5 check. King has to either run or d4. Takes. Looks like it's going to be checkmate. I think that that's even better than bishop g4. Okay? So I'm going to go queen takes e4. I'm 99% uh, sure that this should end in a checkmate quickly. Bishop c5 check. Notice the king doesn't really have any options. You've got two moves, d4 and king g3. Okay, they choose king g3. And the question now is, well, never mind. I bet this is a 100 accuracy game. I bet it is. Let's take a look. Which is not saying a lot because, it, yeah, it's not saying a lot because 
it was such a short game. So, and I knew the moves. It wasn't like I was thinking about brilliant stuff, right? Um, yeah, there you go. Cool. Maybe that's going on the thumbnail. So let's go talk about it just for a moment. That's the first reason why at the lower levels, this is a very nice counter gambit because a lot of people are going to make this mistake because when you when from a quick glance, it's like, well, this pawn's defended. This one's not. So I'll just take here, but that's a huge blunder, right? So we go for the check capturing here and bishop c5 is better now like i said this is not bad it's still really good you're gonna get a piece but it's better to get checkmate yeah so it is mate and three from here if you guys would like to pause mate and three all right well there's actually two different ways you can do it uh one is by taking here and i think i would have been able to figure this out if the game continued but one is taking here. The king, if it moves here, uh, this is actually just checkmate, which is kind of cool. Look at this. <laughs> That's a nice one. And if the king moves here, then you go queen f5 check. Forces the king to either here or here. And on this one, you have checkmate on e4 because the bishop is controlling that. Okay, that's nice. And on this one, you have queen f2 Ooh, very nice because the bishop is slicing across it, yeah it's actually an interesting uh main in three the other way so that was that was option number one okay that was you take the pawn option number two is you go queen g6 check and the king has to go to f4 then you go to f5 ah uh, and then you sneak down here so it was basically recognizing that if the queen landed on f2 with the support of the bishop it was checkmate and then also that other pattern that we saw. Wow, pretty nice. All right, cool. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. We're black again. All right, I'm going to go with e5. And, ah, bishop c4. Now, this is a tricky opening. You might think that they're just trying to checkmate you, which maybe they are. But there's also, like, some gambits that are very, very tricky. So... Let's just pretend they are going to checkmate me. What's the easiest thing to do? What I like to do is just play knight f6. I don't even give them the option to try to checkmate me. Because if you go there, I will take your queen. And if you go here, well, you're not even threatening anything. Because my knight's just going to sit there, right? So this is how I like to play against bishop c4. Uh, of course, they could have started with the queen if they wanted to go for the four-move checkmate. But now, d4 is a gamut that I used to play a lot, actually, as white. Very, very tricky. A lot of fun, uh, and I'm curious to see if our opponent will play d4 here. I'm going to say probably not, but that's a that's a fun one. I'm going to say they're probably going to play like knight c3, and, <clears throat> oh, queen f3, okay. <laughs> they are committed, committed to the uh, checkmate threat, all right. So, developing... You can't go wrong developing here. Uh, one thing that I am wondering is, are they going to try to go here and line up like this? Are they actually going to try that? I mean, right here, do, 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 check, do, do. let's see here, B5. I think we have a little trap in that situation. So I'm going to play knight C6, and we'll see if we can trap them. This will be an instructive moment. If they go queen b3. No, they play c3. Okay. So c3 shuts out my knight. Probably a good move. It's probably a good move. I want to play d5, but they have it covered. So I can't get away with that right now. So what else can we do? We could play bishop c5. That seems like a good diagonal. Yeah, bishop c5 seems very reasonable. Let's play bishop c5. They can't play d4 because we have it controlled. B4, I'm just going to go back. B5, I'm just going to move my knight. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. And I'm getting ready to castle. Then D6, maybe bring my bishop out somewhere. Now, very important question for you guys watching the video. Why did they play A4? Why? There's one reason. Well, the reason is they want to play b4, 
And when I go back, they want to play a5 and trap my bishop. That's why they want to do it. This is the, the clever way to do it. You don't play b4 first because then it's obvious what a4 is intending. You play a4 first, it's not quite so obvious. So there's usually two moves, a6 and a5, both of which save my bishop because I give it places to go to. A5, uh, obviously you gain more space, but then you have a hole on B5 that you have to worry about. A6, you don't get as much space, but you don't have a hole to worry about. And if they play B4, you just tuck your bishop back here. Which one is better? Is red or blue better? You know, like, it's just a preference. So I'll play A6. I kind of like to not give up the holes. Nothing wrong with A5. You could totally do that too, so... Whatever floats your boat, okay? Still in a castle, but I had to pause and react to the threat over there. Now, when they played before, I could have like moved my bishop back somewhere here and it wouldn't have gotten trapped, but I want to keep it on this diagonal. So that's why we're doing this move, okay? They might go there, they might go here. Do I care? This one I might care about. That's kind of an annoying pin. And so this is a, where I think I will break the rule, right, of... I'm going to pause my development because this is actually a really annoying pin. Okay? And so... We will stop the bishop from coming there. Notice, too, how, like, I'm playing these moves that I said you can't really play early in the game, but I'm reacting to what my opponent is doing, and they're spending some time making some pawn moves, too. So I'm not way behind in development. That's important, right? I have three pieces out. White has three pieces out. Like, we're pretty much even, okay? Uh, let's see. Can they play d4? No, not yet. I'm still good there. Uh, okay. Can I play d5? Takes, take. No, not yet. I'm still not able to do that. Um, I think we got to go d6. Seems like the only reasonable move to let my bishop out. And Oh, by the way, I'm delaying because I want to see what they're trying to do. Like, are they trying to attack me? You know? I want to see. And so I might go bishop e6. Now, we've talked about it before. The weakness here is significant. But I don't see how white takes advantage of that. They could try to bring the queen in, but then I could just go like queen e7 and queen f7. So as long as you have a clear path, you can, you can create weaknesses. You just have to make sure you see how you're going to fix it. And now they immediately play b4 okay um i think what i want to do is take here and eh, maybe not actually because they might just take my bishop and then i have to retreat my bishop then they'll take here yeah maybe i don't want to do that actually okay maybe i'll just go back i could go here or here here takes takes i want to have the rook involved i think i'll go here because if they play b5 i want to be able to take and have this pin. And if my bishop is sitting on a7, it blocks the rook. That's not going to be what I want. So that's why I'm going here. Of course, they could chase me, and then I will go back. But Yes, knight to d2. Now, the question is, can I play d5 now? Takes, takes, looks like I can. That's usually a good plan. Let's do it. It's usually a good plan because it gives you more space. It gives your pieces places where they can jump around and move to. It opens up things, right, that the pawns are no longer controlling. And so that's de definitely the way to go. Now, the question is, which way do I take? This one looks like it's going to force a trade. This one is uh, not really attacking anything. Maybe if the knight moves, we could take here, but... Also kind of putting myself into a pin. I think I'm going to take this way. And I'm happy to trade queens here, I think. Because now I can castle. My rook's going to be attacking. Uh, it looks like a weak point in white's position. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this now. I'm happy with this. Okay, here we go. So look at this. This guy's a target. It's defended, but it's a target. If this ever moves, this becomes a target. This guy's a target, right? Where I can put a rook and attack that. All right, can he go anywhere? Not really. I mean, here I'll just take it. Uh, let's see, do I want to castle? I think I still want to castle this way. Even There is b5 though, which is a little bit annoying. 
But we could also just castle this way. We could kick the knight right away. Doesn't seem out of the question, actually. Yeah, I kind of actually like f5. Where's the knight going to go? I'm going to do that. I'm gonna, usually pawns that are side by side are pretty powerful, pretty strong. So I'm going to go ahead and take that opportunity. I'm still not decided which way I'm castling. If I'm even going to castle, I don't have to. I could play g6 to defend this. Yeah, g6 or castles. Which one is it? Huh. Maybe I should get the king safe. I mean, it's, it's not really about the getting the king safe. It's more about activating the rooks, right? The king is safe. The queens are off the board. The king is safe. I think I want to castle just to activate the rooks. So we defend. We activate the rook. He castles too. Okay. Let's go rook d8. And I'm eyeing this guy. Okay, I'm eyeing that weak spot. Okay, b5. If we take, the drawback is the rook might invade. If we don't take, I don't really see a drawback to that. I think I'll just move my knight. Question is where? I think I'm going to go here. And I might fork this and actually take the bishop. I will think about that. Um, but if they take me, I take them. It's not a big deal. Okay, bishop is coming into the game. So now we have to probably move the rook. If I move here, I lose a pawn. I don't want to lose that pawn. That's an important pawn. So I believe... Rook f7 needs to be the move. Gets away from the bishop. Um, keeps everything defended. Oh, there is this idea of this pawn, which I did not see. That might be a powerful move from white. They didn't do it. I was a little bit concerned about that. Yeah, how do I attack this? Because here's my problem. If Where do I move my knight to? Ah, what about f4, actually? Takes, takes. Knight e2, takes, takes, takes. That seems pretty good. That seems pretty good. I got to move a little bit faster. I'm going to get flagged here. But let me go with knight f4. Try to simplify some things here. I think I'm going to trade. Now, I could also defend that pawn with g5, but it's a doubled pawn anyway. I think I'd rather just trade. I think I would rather trade. So I'll let him take me, and I actually will get this other pawn at the end too. So That's a fork, but my knight's defended, so it's not super dangerous. It's not an exceptional fork <laughs> for those of you who are... Watching the live stream. Uh, let me go here. Back these guys. If they take me, I will probably recapture. I'm debating if I want to take this knight instead. No, I think I'll just take the, the bishop. Okay, that's a pretty good move, actually, I think. I think I'm going to go attack that guy. Trying to make sure I don't blunder something. There is a check, and I might lose a pawn. Hmm. Yeah, um... Okay, let me go ahead and trade this. And maybe I will play g6 to defend this, because if I go here, he's going to fork me. He's going to take the bond. No, no, he just trades. Okay. Well, this I think I'm happy with. I mean, yes, my pawns are ugly, but...
Yeah, this is not good for white. They just lost all their pawns. Oh my. Okay. Okay. Well, they were playing good until they decided to try to flag me instead of using their time. They had plenty of time to sit and think and find a good move, but... I'm trying to checkmate. I will checkmate. Well, it goes to show, when you have a time advantage, usually trying to flag them is not the best approach. Uh, you want to just play good moves, and they didn't do that there, so... All right, uh, 90, yeah, so we played pretty well. Uh, don't think we had any big mistakes. We did have a miss. Let's see what the miss was. What was the miss? A6 was a miss? Interesting, it wanted me to just castle, and I guess the idea is you just retreat the... Oh, wow. D. F the idea was to meet B4 with D5. And if they take you, e4, and if the queen moves somewhere, knight e5. Okay, and if they, if they trade, Stockfish is like, this is really good for you for some reason, because you're, okay, yeah, this, this is one of those crazy Stockfish lines that, oh, there's knight d3, okay, wow. Yeah, that's... That's not something that I would ever see in like a, unless it was like a tournament game where I'm really thinking deeply, that's very, very hard to see. Because what I saw was I have to move my bishop back. I can't go here anymore because now I get trapped. So I have to probably go here and it just, that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah, okay. So that was the miss though. I, yeah, just saying, go ahead. I have d5 and all this crazy stuff. d5. E4, 95 to hit the bishop. Yeah, very, very hard to see. Anyway, um, hope you guys appreciated this uh, video. Don't forget, breaking 1500 if you're serious about improving. Links in the description. We've had some amazing testimonies there. And um, yeah, I'd be excited to see you, meet you guys in, in there. So thanks for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, take care.